you've tuned into Bite Size for the last three days, you'll realise that we've been thinking about God's great mercy towards us. His great mercy in giving us living hope. We've had a new birth and we've been joined to Jesus Christ who has been born again himself in the sense that he's in his resurrection body now. And we too have been given spiritual new birth, a living hope of eternal life. We have been born into a new family, God's family, so we have an imperishable inheritance waiting for us. And none of this can be taken away because we are guarded by God's power for that wonderful salvation kept in heaven for us. Now, I I hope your response to this over the last three days as we've looked at these verses and near the start of 1 Peter is to rejoice because that's what these verses are written for. They're written to make Christians rejoice as we remember our amazing blessings that God has given us in the Lord Jesus Christ, the results of our new birth uh, that we have been given. Look, Listen to uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 6. It's, it's the next verse we're looking at. Here's what Peter writes. And you rejoice in this. That's all those mercies that God has shown us. You rejoice in this. Even though now, for a short time, if necessary, you suffer grief in various trials. Rejoice. You could be forgiven for thinking that we're back in Philippians, couldn't you? The previous Bite Size series, a letter characterised by Paul encouraging those he was writing to to rejoice. But of course, that isn't just a Pauline theme. It isn't just a Philippians theme. It's a biblical theme for God's people. We're to rejoice in our salvation, such a great salvation uh, that we have received from God in and through Jesus Christ. We need to constantly be reminded of how good God has been to us, how gracious, how kind, how merciful in giving us the, the wonderful gift of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and all the benefits that we have in him. We need to constantly bring those things back to mind, feed our hearts on them so that we know joy. We need to because the fact is that in this life, as Peter points out here, uh, we suffer grief in various trials. Uh, Peter points out that they're just for a short time, although often when we're in them they feel like a long time. Uh, From God's perspective they're short and one day from our perspective in eternity they will be short but now they can seem long and hard and difficult. Uh, The wonderful thing about God's word is that it recognises that even though as Christians we we do know joy and we are to feed that joy so that we genuinely do rejoice in our salvation, it doesn't remove the fact that we we suffer, uh, that we go through trials that produce grief. Of course we do. Listening to this, may, that may well be true of you at the moment, and it's tough. That's why the, the Bible constantly draws God's people back to what we have, what we have been given in Jesus Christ. Yes, we know grief. We know trials, we know difficulties. Some of them are difficulties and trials that are common to to every human being who lives on this planet, whether they're a Christian or not. Others are more specific to the Christian. You may be going through some suffering, some trial, because you name the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour and your king. And you get stick for that in your family or at work or from friends, they poke fun. Perhaps you're discriminated against even sometimes. If you're living to this in another country uh, where things are a lot harder, you may be persecuted for us. And maybe that's coming one day for us in the West too. These things are real. But joy is real. Rejoicing is real as we remember what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, So don't forget what you have in him. Constantly remember the goodness of what God has given you in the Lord Jesus Christ.